In this video here, we'd like to talk about the different ideas involved in actually measuring voltage and current, or maybe even the ants you replaced with versus measuring voltage versus current, because they're very different measurements, and you have to be prepared depending on what you really mean to try to measure. So again, in trying to get electronics all correct, we noted in a previous video that there is a very big difference between voltage and current, and we drew an analogy with a water pump here. We said that voltage was the pressure that forces electrons to flow around a circuit, just like a water pump presents pressure that can force water to flow around sort of a water circuit made out of pipes. And where voltage would be like the pressure, current would be like the flow of water in a water circuit or electrons in, a, in an electrical circuit. So what about measuring the two? Well, the ideas that we're going to try to present here also tie into the different jacks that you see on a typical meter here. So here's a, um, a so-called voltmeter or a multimeter that I have. And if I look very carefully at it, you see that this jack here is actually labeled volts, ohms, and this symbol here means diode. We'll get to that in a later video here. But we generally use this jack right here when we want to measure volts or resistance. And then if we want to make a current measurement, we look over here and realize there's two completely separate jacks. One is labeled 10 amps, the other is labeled 400 milliamps. Now there's these, so these would be the current measuring jacks. The 10 amp one is typically used when you're measuring a lot of current in some household device or something. It's not really used very much in hobbyist electronics because 10 amps would be a lot of current. So don't use this one very much. But this one here is the 400 milliamp jack, and that's the one that we, we will use quite a bit for hobbyist electronics because this is 400 thousandths of an amp, and it's not very much current, and that's typically what we might see in some everyday circuits that we're going to build. So you can see that there are different configurations here, and the black one labeled common right here is generally where the black lead will always go. But let's see now, what is the difference? How do we know when to put the, put the, uh, the red lead either here into the voltage, one labeled voltage, or the one over here labeled current, or 400 the milliamp scale right here? How do we know when to do that? Well, the first clue, of course, is when you decide what it is you're measuring. Do you want to measure voltage or current? Because they're different things, and, you, and one isn't can't be measured the same way as the other, and I'm going to tell you why in just a second here. So you'll always be aware of that. And of course, you're in, in voltage mode here. You'll always want to click your meter up to a voltage setting. And if you go over here to current, you're going to want to click your meter over onto a current setting. So the, the meter is just, it's just all over the place in terms of how it works, and it's just voltage and current measurements are different, and you have to get your meter ready for what you want to measure. It doesn't know, and it won't make any automatic adaptations for you. So why is it then that there are different jacks, and why is it then there are different settings? Even on meter, why are current and voltage measurements so different? Well, if you go back to the water pump analogy, it's not that hard to figure out why. So in the first case here, let's figure out how we would make a voltage measurement here. Okay, so how you make a voltage measurement? You'd like to measure sort of the pressure here that this pump is able to deliver to the circuit. Just like you were making an electrical voltage measurement, you'd like to measure the pressure or the voltage that this battery is able to supply to a circuit. And notice, like the pump, the battery has two terminals. The pump has an input down here and an output up here. Just like the battery, you might think of the positive as the output and the negative as the input, something like that. So they're similar in that regard. So how is it you would measure the pumping strength of the pump? Well, one way to do it would be sort of maybe to put your finger into the water supply down here, if you can, and just sort of measure how tight or how strong it feels. That would be an indication of pressure versus the pressure up here. That's how you could measure sort of the water, the differential pressure that the pump is able to supply to the water. You could just sort of feel it. But notice what you've done. You've inserted your finger here and here, and then you sort of think, hmm, which one feels different, or how well is this pump working based on what you'd feel by sticking your finger in the water pump there versus in the water pump there. And that's exactly what you do when you have a meter, and in fact, why a meter has these two leads like that, because if you're going to measure the voltage of a battery, you would put the two leads across the outputs of the batteries right here to measure the voltage of the battery. The voltage would appear on the voltmeter screen, just like you're putting your two fingers into the water supply here to measure the pressure differential of a pump. And so voltage is very much one of these, and water pressure are very much one of these so-called difference measurements right here. You're really measuring the voltage difference between these two terminals, just like in the water pump, you're measuring the pressure difference. And that's what pumps do. They create a pressure difference we can get, which can get water or air to flow. And that's what batteries do. They create a voltage difference that can get current to flow. So, and the meter needs to know that you're measuring sort of this difference measurement right here. And that's exactly why when you make a voltage measurement, you have to get this other yellow lead into the voltage jack and put this on voltage. So the meter knows you're making one of these sort of two finger or two lead difference measurements. And that's what a voltage measurement is. A current measurement, on the other hand, is very different than a voltage measurement. If you wanted to measure just how much current is flowing through the pipes, 
it certainly has something to do with the water pump pressure, this difference you'd get by sticking your finger in. Certainly it does. The higher the pressure, the more current flow we'd get. And we'll investigate that more in the video on Ohm's Law. But if you wanted to measure the exact current flow in here, what you'd have to do, it's just not possible to look at a circuit like this and try to probe around by just touching the pipes or feeling the pipes with your hands to get a measure of the flow. You would actually have to break into the pipe like this. So you'd literally have to take a pipe and cut it like this and divert the water flow out of the circuit like that. Maybe something like this. You'd have to break the pipes and bend them so that the flow, which is coming around the circuit like this, coming around the circuit here, could actually flow out of this pipe here and into some sort of meter that you might have right here. And I'll just call this a flow meter right here, but you want to send the flow from the circuit into your flow meter. Something will magic will happen over here and you'll get some number on here. Maybe there's a little readout right here which says like five gallons per minute or something like that. But in either case, it'll make the measurement and send the flow right back up in the circuit so it can keep operating. But see, the difference between the voltage measurement is in the voltage measurement, you left the circuit more or less intact and just stuck your fingers in there to get a voltage difference, or you can stick the, stove, the probes in there if it was a battery circuit to get the voltage difference. But in the current case here, you actually have to break the circuit and get into the flow so it may be measured. And then when you're done, you could remove the meter, repair the pipes, and the circuit would be operating as normal. And once again, the meter needs to know that. It needs to know if you're making a flow measurement. So when the jack is over here in the voltage socket, that's not going to be a flow measurement. The, volt the meter is expecting to make one of those difference measurements, like sticking your two fingers in. But if you want to make that flow measurement, then you have to take the jack out, put it over here into the current jack. Now the meter's ready to make a flow measurement. Click the dial over here to current, and now you'll be all set and ready to make your measurement in there. So it's a difference over here, a difference measurement over here, and a flow measurement over here. The meter needs to know these things, and that's why there's completely separate jacks for these things. And one more case here that we have to consider is the voltmeter versus the current meter right here. So let's just consider for a minute here, suppose we were measuring the pressure difference, suppose this was a pressure meter right here, and we had sort of one, I don't know, pressure probe that we'd stick here and another pressure probe that we'd stick down here. And we're getting the pressure over here versus down here where we have a flow meter. These are two meters, and in the case of this thing here, it could all even be in the same meter, but are there differences between them? Like, can a pressure meter be used as a flow meter and vice versa? We say no. And think about it for a minute. Suppose you did want to tap into the circuit right here to make a pressure measurement. You would have to draw a little bit of water out of here to compare the pressure difference here versus here, but you don't want to draw very much water because if you started to draw a lot of water out of the, your circuit or a lot of electric current out of your electric circuit, you would alter its behavior and you don't want to do that. So for this reason here, pressure meters and voltmeters here, they have an internal resistance which is very large. And by having a very large internal resistance, what that means is when they're used, they don't draw very much electricity or very much water. And that's a good thing because, again, you don't want this measurement to affect your circuit because then you won't have the same circuit anymore. So a pressure meter and a voltmeter would have to have a very large resistance in order to behave sort of in a desirable way. What about a flow meter? Well, as the water comes out of the circuit and flows, you kind of want it just to flow quickly through your meter and back out again, again, so it won't interrupt or affect the normal behavior of the circuit you're trying to measure here. So for that reason, a flow meter or we're talking about electronics, the current meter right here, those are going to have an R, which are very small. So as a device, it's going to have a very small resistance. So if it was a, actually an electrical meter here, it'd very have, a, have a very low resistance path all the way around its measuring circuit. If it was a water flow measuring circuit, it would have a very large pipe, pipe diameter relative to the circuit you're measuring. Maybe the flow meter would have a huge pipe like this, just so it can present, it can make its measurement, but it can present a very low measurement to the circuit. So the R has to be small. And this is another reason why when you go back to the meter, there's different jacks. When I put this jack into the volt, when I put this clip rather into the volt jack, the meter has a very large resistance. So when I go sticking this around in my circuit, it won't draw very much current or water to make the measurement. But when I want to make that flow measurement, actually get into the flow, break the pipe out, I have to take the jack and put it over here. So the meter is now a very low resistance mode. So it can make that current measurement of either water or electricity and not interrupt its flow very much. So see, there's a lot of nuances and differences in there, but I think the water analogy helps very much. And just remember, these meters are just not automatic. You have to tell them exactly what to do. You have to get your jack into the right spot, and you have to get your dial set to the right setting, or your measurement's just gonna be nonsense.